Greetings and good morning. In order to win in court, you have to redeem the bond, Auto Trice QCIP DTCC. It's all about the bonds. What they are doing in these courts is all about bonds. When you go into a, the courtroom after you're arrested, they use two different sets of bonds. What they do when you are arrested, they fill out a bid bond. The United States District Court uses 20, uh, 273, 274, and 275 SF standard form. Standard form 273, standard form 274, and two, standard form 275. This is the United States District Court. There is another set of bonds, and they are all put together by GSA, General Service Administration. I'm just talk, uh, talking off the top of my head because I have all the this stuff memorized. GSA from SF24 is the bid bond. Everyone should have a copy of the bid bond. The performance bond is SF25. The payment bond is SF25A and put out by the GSA. Okay, so what are they doing with these bonds? What's going on in the courtroom is that they are you they are suing you for a debt collection. If you look at these bonds, every every one of these bonds, the bid bond, the performance bond, and the payment bond, all have a penal sum attached to it. The reason for the penal sum is if you don't pay the debt, you go into default judgment. That is what is going on in the courtroom. That is why all of these guys are sitting in prison wondering what's going on. If you go into go in and argue jurisdiction or refuse to answer questions that the, the uh, ministerial administrator or the court uh, addresses to you, they will find you in contempt of court and they will put you in jail. What they do is arrest you. Then they hold you basically until the suit has been completed. Once they get default judgment on you because of your failure to pay the debt, they put you in prison. Uh, the attorneys are, are there to create the smoke screen. What attorneys have been trained to do is to lead you into dishonor or default judgment. Then the court puts you into prison. Then they sell your default judgment. Who do they sell it to? Believe it or not, the U.S. District Court buys all of these state court judgments. I don't know why no one has found uh, this out before. There are about 300 reinsurance companies that buy these bonds. They are all insurance companies. These are, these are the people that are buying these bonds when you went into default judgment. And they cannot buy these bonds unless they are certified by the Secretary of the Treasury. What are they doing with these bonds? They have regulation uh, governing these bonds. There are 2,000 regulations governing these bonds. Commercial paper, negotiable instruments, any, anything you put your signature on is a negotiable instrument under the Uniform Commercial Code, the UCC, which is the Lex uh, Mercantorium. It's a mercantile, uh, mercantile civil law. The reason they use Lex Mercantorium in the courtroom is because every one of you are merchants at law and merchants at law is everyone anyone who holds themselves out to be an expert because you use commercial paper on a daily basis you are considered to be an expert this is also why they are not telling you what is really going on in the courtroom you are presumed to know this stuff because you hold yourself out to be an expert Every time you put your signature on a piece of paper, you are creating a negotiable instrument. Some are non-negotiable and some are negotiable. Every time you endorse something, you are acting as an accommodating party or an accommodating maker under UCC 3419. An accommodating party is anyone who loans their signature to another party. Read UCC 3419. It tells you what an accommodating maker is and what an accommodating party is. When you loan your signature to them, they can then rewrite your signature on any document they want 
and that's exactly what they are doing. What the federal courts are doing is they are buying up these state court default judgments called criminal cases to cover up what they are really doing. Actually, they are civil cases. If you read Clerk's Praxis, you find that what they call criminal is all civil. They just call it uh, criminal to cover up what they are doing. If you don't pay the debt, you go to prison, bottom line. I know I've been there. Everybody is feeding off of the prison system. All of the major corporations are feeding off of the prison system. How many of you have heard of REIT, Real Estate Investment Trust, or PZN, which means prison trust? Prisoners are real estate. They own all the real estate because they hold the bonds on them. You haven't redeemed your bond, so they didn't close your account. Here's what goes on. A contractor comes in, or any corporation could be in and tender a bid bond to the U.S. District Court, and they buy up these court judgments, and any time you issue a bid bond, there has to be a reinsurance, uh, re reinsure, so they can get so they get a reinsurance company to come in and act as surety for the bid bond. Then they bring in a performance bond. All of these bonds, bid bond, payment bond, and performance bond, are all surety bonds, and any time you issue a bid bond, it has to have a surety guaranteeing a reinsuring the bid bond via issuing a performance bond. Then they get you, then they get an underwriter and that would be uh, either an investment broker or an investment banker. They come in and, and underwrite the performance bond, which is reinsuring the bid bond. What does the underwriter do with the performance bond? The underwriter takes the three bonds and pulls them and creates what is known as a mort gauge, a dead contract, back securities, a mort, mort gauge, back securities. When you pull these MBS, they are, they are called bonds and are sold to, to a company called TBA, which is, a, which is the Bond Market Association. This is an actual corporation, ladies and gentlemen. These converted bonds, now MBSs, are investment securities and being sold, uh, being sold the international, on the international level. CCA is one of the tricks of the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, excuse me, one of the tickers of the New York Stock Exchange. Others include CWX, CWD, and CWG. When it goes to the Frankfurt, CWG. When it goes to Berlin, it's CWD, and so on. Remember, everything is commercial. CFR 2772.11 says that all crimes are commercial. If you read that carefully, it says kidnapping, robbery, extortion, murder, etc., are all commercial crimes. Thus, you are funding the whole enchilada simply because you got into default judgment when you went into court and failed to redeem the bond. This is why people don't win in court, because they don't redeem the bond. You are the principle upon which all money circulates, but you don't want, but you don't want to start arguing with the court about that. They are drafting you for performance, so anytime the court asks you to do something, they are drafting you for performance, and if you don't perform, you get into dishonor by non-acceptance. Okay, that's called conditional acceptance. You guys remember staying in honor, there's, there's uh, a couple ways of doing it. You can do a conditional acceptance, you can just pay the debt. Um, you know, I would always advocate for the conditional acceptance upon the fact that they can prove their claim or an injured party, so on and so forth. They're making a formal pre uh, presentment under 3-501 3 of the UCC so they can charge you and they use the word charge. They use the same commercial word on your indictment, infor information and complaint. They use the word charge, i.e. the following charges. He has two counts of charges, etc. Be as gentle as a dove and as wise as a serpent. You can't act like an insurgent or a belligerent. If you do, they will uh, treat you like one. They'll beat you up. What you, ha what you want to do is settle the account. Go to full settlement and closure. Again, go to full settlement and closure, ladies and gentlemen. 
You're running the account. You are the fiduciary trustee over the account. Tell them what to do. You are the principal and the owner of the account. Tell them what to do. Tell them you want to want full settlement and closure of the account. You have to, to do this from the get-go, from the very beginning, in ad initio, okay? non pro tonk. In order to win in the court, you have to redeem the bond. Here's where to begin. Start with what we call a conditional acceptance. With a conditional acceptance, you can say, I am more than happy to give you my name if you can show uh, that charging papers have been put into the court record. I have not seen any papers that show any charges exist. That's a negative avertment, ladies and gentlemen. What you are doing is rebutting the presumption that they have charges against you. They work off presumption. They don't have to have anything. You must rebut their presumption. I went down there and asked them for the bid bond. I said I wanted the bid bond back. I asked for full settlement and closure of the account. It's your money That's that they create and they and the same thing is going on in the banks and with the with these bonds they monetize these bonds then ask for legal counsel the reason why you have to have an attorney and i can't emphasize this too strongly is because the attorney while in the courtroom is they is they are working on the public side and you are working on the private side the court cannot talk to you except through your attorney you need a mouthpiece, a microphone. That is what attorneys are, a mouthpiece. Everyone on the public side is insolvent and bankrupt. You are not. This is, in, uh, this, is, this, is situation, this situation is called a fiction of law. They will, they will not allow you to defeat this fiction of law. Why? In Admiralty Maritime Law, everything is colorable, ladies and gentlemen. It has the appearance of being real, but is not real. They will appoint legal counsel for you. You then instruct the attorney that you are doing a letter of rogatory. If you don't know what rogatory is, you need to go look it up. Or letter of advice. This is also called acceptance for honor. And you want an accounting of what the total amount of the, bills, the bill is post settlement and closure of this account. Then you give your QCIP and auto trice number and, and your case number. So your QCIP number is going to be your uh, social security number with dashes and then your auto trice, uh, your social security number without dashes. Then of course the court case docket. Here's the wording you use. I accept your charges for value and consideration in return for post settlement and closure of the case number, da 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 da. Account number, uh, 123-45-6789, put down your nine-digit social security number and put down your QCIP, which is also your social security number without dashes, I believe I said that backwards, and auto trisis, your social security number, excuse me, your social security number without dashes. Please use my exempt, let me clarify that. The account number is going to be with dashes, the QCIP number is going to be without, and the auto trice is going to also be without dashes. Please use my exemption for full settlement and closure of this account as this account is prepaid and exempt from levy, dated and endorse it as the authorized representative. Auto trice means automated tracking identification system. This is the same as your social security number without the dashes. When I said that they didn't even want to talk to me. When you say QCIP and auto trice, they know exactly what you were talking about. QCIP is the Committee on Uniform Securities Identification Process. QCIP, again, that is uh, Committee on Uniform Securities Identification Process. I hear so many people talk about QCIP, I don't think I've ever heard anybody actually identify it for what it is uses your social security number to identify you, uh, you because the birth certificate is a security. It is an investment security and they have all the original birth certificates which are registered at the state level with the Department of Human Resources and then they go to the Department of Commerce and the federal level and then to the DTC, Depository Trust Corporation. Judges and lawyers don't understand commercial law. They do not teach commercial law at law school. They have a 
uh, a special school for them, and it is on a need-to-know basis. The law always assumes that you know since you were doing this since you were born until you reach the age of accountability, which is 18 years of age, or what they call adulthood. If you're holding yourself out and using commercial paper on a daily basis, that legal definition makes you an expert, or you wouldn't be using it. So, they presume that when you go into the courtroom, you know all of this stuff. They have, they have to give you an out. Whenever you create a liability, you always have to create a remedy. They are on the public side of the accounting ledger. You are on the private side. You have an account, and your account is a demand deposit. Account, and you are insured by the FDIA and the FDIC. The Federal Depository Insurance Act, which insures the FDIC, which is the Federal Depository Insurance Corporation under Title 12, they have a $10 million policy on you, and you are worth more dead than you are alive. They will never tell you this stuff. Note, all tradable securities must be assigned a QCIP number before it can be offered uh, to investors. Birth certificates and social security applications are converted into government securities, assigned a QCIP number, grouped into a lot, and then are marked as a mutual fund investment. Upon maturity, the profits are moved into a government SESTIC trust, and if you are still alive, the certificate document are reinvested. It is the funds contained in the SESTIC trust that the judge, clerk, and county prosecutor are really after or interested in. This trust actually pays all of your debts, but nobody tells you this. Nobody tells you that because the elites consider those assets to be their property and the Federal Reserve System is responsible for the management of those investments. Social Security, SSI and SSD, Medicare and Medicaid are all financed by the trust. The government makes you pay taxes and a portion of your wages supposedly to pay for these services, which they can borrow at any time for any reason since they cannot access the SESC Trust to finance their wars or to bail out Wall Street and their uh, uh, patron corporations. The public is encouraged to purchase all kinds of insurance protection when the trust actually pays for all physical damages, medical, cost, new technology, and death benefits. The hype to purchase insurance is a poly, or excuse me, a ploy to keep us into poverty and profit off our stupidity because the Vatican owns and the controlling interest in all insurance companies. You may receive a monthly statement from a mortgage company, loan company, or utility company, which usually has already been prepaid by the trust. Almost all of these corporate businesses double dip and hope that you will never, uh, that you will, that you have been uh, conditioned well enough by their credit scam to pay this, them a second time instead of paying the statement next time, sign it approved and mail it back to them. If they cannot, if they then contact you about payment, ask them to send you a true bill instead of a statement and you will be glad to pay it. A statement, and again, ladies and gentlemen, that's that's a conditional acceptance right there. Send me a true bill, I'll be glad to pay it, right? You're not saying that you won't pay it, you're just asking for a true bill, not a statement. A statement document uh, documents what was due and paid, ladies and gentlemen. A statement documents what was due and paid, whereas a true bill represents only what is due. Banks and utility companies have direct access into the SESTKV, uh, excuse me, the SESTK Trust, and all they need was your name, social security number, and signature, which we all give when we sign up for their, their uh, services. We give them a name, we give them a signature, we give them a social security number, um, and that's how you get your electric and your phone and all that good jazz. So... That was not my work. That come from Stop the Pirates. And people have asked me why I've uh, uh, started to look so heavily into the UCC after studying so many different other aspects of law. Um, and quite frankly, 
what I just read to you is exactly why I'm looking at it. If the court systems are, are utilizing it, if all crimes are commercial, if everything uh, from the moment you walk out of the door is commercial, then everything falls underneath the jurisdiction of the UCC, the Uniform Commercial Code, uh, which is where you'll find your remedy. You hear a lot of people speaking about the fraud, the fraud in the banking system, the fraud in the credit cards, the fraud in the mortgages, the fraud, the fraud, the fraud, the fraud, the fraud. Ladies and gentlemen, this is gonna be extremely hard for you to wrap your head around. It isn't fraud. It isn't fraud and it isn't fraud for this reason. They provided you a remedy. They don't have any obligation to show you this remedy, but it does exist. It does lie within the UCC, excuse me, the UCC. It does lie within common law. And uh, remember, the UCC must be always in harmony with common law. So for these uh, bar attorneys, to tell people that the common law doesn't exist, they're absolutely full of horse pucky. Uh, the common law is the be all. Um, it, it, it goes back to common sense, which uh, derives from God's law, natural law. So again, if it's not in harmony with God's law, natural law, um, then you won't find it in the UCC. So I, I'm here to tell you that it, it it's imperative for you guys to start studying this stuff if you want to uh, take control of the um, the trust that was created for you at your birth. Uh, near as I can tell, that's exactly what the birth certificate, the social security number, and all that equate to is a trust, a trust account that was set up for you at your birth. And the way that you uh, need to start looking at things is that everything is in trust. Uh, because it absolutely is. Um, so if you can read the King James 1611 Bible, I know a lot of people uh, feel differently about it. If you can read between the lines on that and you're studying the law, things will start to come to fruition for you. It all goes back to God's law. It always has and it always will. Um, so, you know, for example, uh, here's a, a, I'll paraphrase this. Um, here's a maximum of law, uh, a man is worth his, his uh, earnings, his, his day of labor is worth earnings, you know, so you have a right to be paid, and, and you find that in the Bible, you also find that in the UCC, and you also find that in the maximums of law, again, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but, uh, you know, you have a right to your, your fair wages and earnings, um, there's other maximums I could lean upon right now that derive from the Bible, uh, and yet we find them even true today. So um, God bless you guys. Thanks for tuning in again. That was from Stop the Pirates. I just found it to be extraordinarily interesting. Uh, it's, it's how to stop the court cases. Um, again, if you physically injured somebody or harmed them, your best bet is to go settle up with them prior to court. It says it right in the Bible. If you don't go settle your affairs, then the sheriff will be forced to bring you before the court and they will arrest you. And it's, it's biblical, guys. If you've done something wrong, go make it right. Make an, a valiant effort and attempt. Remember, an offer of tendering of payment made and refused is payment made in full. If you've done something wrong, like ran into a fence and you've went there and you've offered to pay and you've, you've, you've cleaned it up and they still won't accept your, your uh, offer to fix the fence, then an offer of tendering of payment made and refused is payment made in full. Then they're happy. And the maxims of law, again, you know, reign, reign true. So with that said, have a great Monday morning. Um, let this resonate. This, again, was from Stop the Pirates. I would encourage everybody to study the UCC. Look at the UCC-1 and see the inherent benefits in the UCC. Um, and with that, have a beautiful, blessed day.